OJT fan, what up? Back at it again with another video. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank everybody who shared my for sale post on IG and Facebook. Um, I appreciate everything, all the comments, the back talk, all that. Like it was entertaining. Like I get with the car market, anything hobby wise is getting expensive, especially with these Japanese cars. Like I get it. But at the end of the day, you can only blame the consumers because they're the ones that jacking the prices up. Not the people selling it, because listen, if something doesn't sell, the price won't go up. So I will say this though, the next time you do see a car for sale for an absurd amount of money, just shoot them an offer. Because mainly the reason they'll put a price like that is to weed out the low balls, because that was my whole objective too. And on the Facebook forums, you know, to get everybody just talking. So all that do is just bring my post up. All right, so out of nowhere, guys, I get it. Um, you know, that's 14 is gone. But my reasoning for selling that car, honestly, was because I'm going to tell you off the rip. If you own a 240SX as a project, it gets really frustrating waiting for parts. Like, it gets really, really frustrating. Like, it's hard for me to get motivation to get going on the car. Like, I get it. There was things I can do, you know, in the meantime. But at the same time, it's like... I had nothing like to really look forward to like besides like the kit and the wheels and it's like anything else I wanted like it was on back order or it was a ridiculous amount of money. Like I wanted kooky tail lights for the car and honestly the only way I was going to able to get a set was if I paid like 700 bucks which I think is just ridiculous for some OEM tails like that. I lost patience with it. Um, I mean it's off to a better owner who will have you know more time with it. Um, so I put the car for sale a couple days ago and you know, I was getting a bunch of offers that I was liking, but then this one guy, he hits me up um, with a trade. One offer that kind of stuck to me, and it was a local guy, number one, and number two, he had a car that, like, I had no intentions of buying after I sold the S13. I mean, Jesus Christ, S14. So, you know, he hits me up. Um, we He drives the car up to my house, and then, you know, we look over everything, come to agreement, and... Like I said, we both came out winning because he wanted the S chassis and the car that I'm about to reveal. You know, I really actually like enjoy this car. Like I was not expecting to be able to land one of these, to be honest. So if you guys follow me, my personal page or my Facebook, you obviously know like what car this is, but I'll tell the people that don't follow me on IG. So here is the replacement for the Stemmy Zanky, Stanky Zanky S14, whatever you guys want to call it. But here's the replacement. It's a 2003 Lexus IS300. And before you ask the question, yes, it is a factory five speed car. That was the main reason I jumped on it because these are getting extremely hard to find. And honestly, I feel like nowadays you can't even find one unless you got like 10 grand to spend. So if you are familiar with my car lineup, um, uh, this is my third Toyota. So I got this. I got the black GS outside and I got a black Tundra. So three out of four of my cars is black and I'm really gonna hate this come springtime. Obviously it's not in the cleanest shape, but I mean, look, it's a factory five speed IS 300 and it's a solid car. Like it has no rust, zero rush, which is like hard to find in the Northeast. Like pretty much any IS 300 I've seen in the Northeast has uh, rust going on the rockers and the quarter panel. But if you see here, there's zero rust in this car, cause um, it was from Virginia originally. All right, my LeBrons are squeaking like some damn SpongeBob boots. So calling me all New Balances. A little stupid stuff like dinged up door. Paint is looking a little crazy, but I'm me personally, I think this might be a good opportunity for me to learn how to buff, cause it's like. What more damage can I do? Next video, I'm definitely gonna give this thing a, a wash. Not bad. Luckily with IS300s, there's a whole bunch of them out there, so I'm sure I could find a cleaner interior for part outs. So, as you see the shift knob. Unfortunately, the radio doesn't work and the windshield's cracked, but I'm gonna make this my daily driver. I'm not gonna go crazy with it because I know everybody's gonna say, oh, you should boost the car. I'm not gonna boost the car. I'm not gonna drift the car because you're gonna take away from what I wanna do to the GS outside. So, 
you know, these cars, they commonly have the uh, sticky dash, but previous owner or the owner previous to that, um, my GoPro would die on me. But um, what was I saying last? What was the last thing I said? Oh, the dash, yeah. Um, So I'm gonna sand it down. Uh, maybe I'll paint it or maybe I'll find a much cleaner one. Uh, like I said, it's got the five speed, super short shifter. I forgot what brand he said it is, but I think it's very short. A little sketchy for me, but I'll get used to it. Um, Honestly, my favorite part about IS 300s, that dope watch looking cluster. Let me go on the driver's side now. Um, um, so yeah, like this little red thing that can go. I think, yeah, the steering wheel itself is gonna go. I'm gonna eventually get an RD. Uh, let me go ahead and pop this hood. Yeah, I gotta take care of that thing too. I wonder if it's a Toyota thing because I remember when I bought my Tundra, I had that problem too. And uh, I had the dealer replace it since I bought it from them. But let me see if I can. As we see here, we have the legendary 2JZ. Totally kidding, but it's all there. Uh, that red little... Yeah, I'm just finding things are red everywhere, like it's a damn Blue's Clues. Uh, let me go ahead and fire this thing up. I guess I'm gonna have to order a new uh, separate team belt and uh, maybe some pulleys. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to do a little maintenance on this thing, but hey, it's a project. Yeah, here's the uh, new addition to my roster, I guess. So, first things first, I need to give this car a good wash. Like a very, very good wash. So I bought some supplies today at Harbor Freight. Um, I'm gonna run to my truck and grab them real quick. I'm pretty sure everybody knows if you go to Harbor Freight, you tell yourself you're gonna get one thing and you just end up cashing out on just random stuff. Well, not really random, but stuff that I use for the garage. So my whole objective was to get a buffer. So let's grab one of these for now. I don't know, a little small investment. If I get good at it, I'll just, you know, upgrade to the Milwaukee. But, uh, so, re up on cloths, got my pads, bought this at AutoZone. Watching a couple YouTube videos, a lot of people suggested that, you know, if you're a beginner. I got this from AutoZone too. And some good old polishing towels. And then, crate. got these at the clearance rack from Harbor Freight. Yeah, your body hit different when you turn 30, just letting y'all know. Like, little stuff like this, a little, it's a lifesaver. And, oh, got one of these for sale too, since I have no seats in this garage, so might as well start collecting. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and put that seat together real quick.
All right, so I thought this seat was gonna be a lot harder to put together, but it's literally just three pieces. Voila. Let me stop before I bust my ass. All right, so I think I'm gonna wrap it up, guys. Next time, we'll wash this thing. But until then, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all later. Peace. Thank you.